Have you heard about the new SharePoint vulnerability for on-premise SharePoint servers? Well, it's called Toolshell, and it's critical. It's remote code execution level critical. So if you manage an on-premise SharePoint server, you need to watch this. And if you, if you don't, it's pretty cool stuff to learn about. Let's check this out. All right, so the first question, what is it? Well, it's a vulnerability, and it allows for remote code execution. That means an attacker can run code unauthenticated to your server. Wow, that's bad. And this is SharePoint again. And what we're talking about here is SharePoint 2016, 2019, and subscription edition. And again, these here are all on-premise servers. All right. Uh, but you could, if you were running this in the cloud, it would affect you as well. If you're running it on a virtual machine, it's any server that you're actually installing SharePoint on. That is what's affected. And it does not, so I'm going to change color here, <laughs> does not affect Office 365's SharePoint services. Okay. So the cloud SharePoint you're good to go there. You don't need to worry about that. This is only for your on-premise or VMs you have running in the cloud, all right, where you've installed SharePoint and are managing it. Cool. So that's what's affected. So if this is you, keep listening. If not, hey, stick with us. It's a good time. This is pretty cool stuff. Now, let's talk about the technical details real quick. I'm not going to go too technically deep, but the idea is that originally there were these two CVEs, these vulnerabilities right here, and Microsoft put a patch out for them. So everybody went ahead and patched, thinking, all right, we're good to go now. But guess what? Those bad guys out there and security testers and researchers, all right, well, what they did was they found that they could actually bypass these two CVE patches. Oh, so that means they weren't really fixed. Uh-huh. So Microsoft said, holy cow, what's going on? So Microsoft then released two new CVEs, okay, and then they put patches out for those. And those are what you need to install so that you can get this patch. Now, what's going on here? What is this? Well, it's SharePoint. And there's these vulnerabilities in SharePoint, two of them, really, that we're talking about here. And what happens is, on your SharePoint server, those attackers out there, what they can do is, without authenticating to your server, they're able to upload a malicious ASPX file. All right? And it's called Spinstallo dot aspx all right and that's going to allow them to actually steal some keys right validation keys decryption keys and the sharepoint servers machine key so all these keys are getting stolen from here right and then the bad guy gets them and what's the bad guy going to do then well they're going to forge a valid signed payload right because they're taking those keys and they're going to be able to actually sign a payload and then upload that here to the server and use it to run commands. Oh, yes, absolutely. This is dangerous. So how did all this really come about? Well, let me show you the timeline just real quick. So here, May 25th at the Pone to Own in Berlin, there was a proof of concept shown. Pretty cool, right? Absolutely. And then July 8th, you know, right after that, Microsoft said, hey, yeah, we've got patches for you. But these are the patches that didn't work right. And then... Right after that, there was a proof of concept bypass that was published publicly. So that means any actual bad guys out there could take this proof of concept and use it in the wild. And guess what happened? Yeah, just four days later, we start seeing it in the wild. <laughs> that's right. And that's when Microsoft realized that I guess we didn't really patch those very well. And they assigned new CVEs. And then on July 20th, they issued the final patches. All right, super. So how to check to see if you've been a victim of tool shell? That's pretty darn important, right? Because if you're running one of these SharePoint servers, you want to know, was I affected? Do I even know I was affected? So you're going to check to see if that spinstall zero.aspx file exists on your system. If so, uh, you might want to do some incident response. I'm just saying. You can also, if you have Defender 365 installed on that server, you can run this query right here. And again, it's really looking for that spinstall zero in there. All right, super. So that's how you can tell if you have been affected. 
Now, what about just general patching? What does Microsoft and actually CISA recommend you do? Well, there's three things. Number one, patch, right? That's, yeah, absolutely. Go grab those latest patches for the CVEs, and that is CVE 2025-5370 and 53771. All right, you're going to go ahead and patch those. Got to make sure they're patched. Now, if you are not able to patch, so not able to patch, what are you going to do then? Well, such as, for example, 2016. If you're running SharePoint 2016, Microsoft doesn't have a patch for that as of the recording of this video. Something to keep in mind, right? Absolutely. So what are you going to do if you can't patch it? Well, you need to disconnect your SharePoint server from the internet. So you can still leave it connected to your local internal network, really, uh, just create some firewall rules preventing this server here that you're dealing with, your SharePoint server, from communicating with the web. So you're going to block all external access coming in, okay? And that way you can still access it locally, internally, and it actually uh, you could even VPN into your network and still gain access to it, all right? just depends on your, your firewall rules that you're going to put in here. But the idea is you need to patch it, and if you can't patch it, you need to make sure it does not have internet access because that's how the attackers are going to get in. Yes, absolutely. But what else do you need to do? You need to make sure AMSI is up and running on your SharePoint server. That's Microsoft's anti-malware interface. That's what that is. And that anti-malware interface, what it does, it allows for services and applications to send content to whatever installed antivirus there is so that the antivirus can scan it. So it's going to help you out. And along the lines here, they said, please go ahead and install Defender on your SharePoint server because it's going to help with identifying if there's a problem here. And then lastly, you need to rotate the ASP.NET machine keys. All right, and then go ahead and restart IIS, and that's going to invalidate any stolen keys. And there you go. That's what you need to do. Patch it, make sure AMSI is set up, and you got your Defender installed or another antivirus of choice, and then rotate those ASP.machine keys and restart IIS, and then you should be protected from this vulnerabilities at that point. Now, if you want more information like this and you want to learn about these types of attacks and CVEs and vulnerabilities, come check us out at CBT Nuggets. We got quality, super cool IT training across the board, lots of different stuff with the best trainers in the world. Might be a little biased, but hey. The other thing I wanted to mention is bleeping computers. So if you want to go out and check out their article on Toolshell, it's a great article, very technical. Okay, so you, if you're really wanting to find out what happens and how it works, go check that out. It's also got some cool screenshots in there to help explain things and show how it works. So there you go. That is the tool shell vulnerability in SharePoint. Thanks for watching and subscribe here to get the latest from CBT Nuggets. And if you're interested in IT career or learning more about IT in general, hey, swing by cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.